Hey folks, Scott Kelby here from Kelby One, and we're going to do an intermediate level Lightroom and Photoshop technique here for what looks like a very simple image. I took this uh, during a workshop in China, walking by this store in this little village, and there was a little shop, and this was there. And you're like, yeah, it's not much of an image. And I, I think that's kind of why I wanted to do this tutorial, because sometimes an image like this that's kind of meh, when you do some things to it, you can really make it nice. And, and I'll show you how I used it. It was part of a larger story. But uh, this deceivingly simple image has got a lot to it, fixing it up wise. So let's get started. Here we are in Lightroom. And uh, I'm going to go jump over here to the Develop module. And I'm just going to do some of the standard stuff. I'm like right now, it, it uh, doesn't look bad. Let's hit the Auto button and see what Lightroom would do. So you hit Auto. And it's... Uh, not awesome. <laughs> the, the, my biggest problem is it looks a bit overexposed now, just in general. So I'm going to go lower the exposure, make it a little lower. And I, I generally make my images very contrasty, so I would crank up the contrast. Now, the, the, part of the, the part of what bothers me about this photo is, you know, our eyes are drawn to the brightest thing. It's kind of drawn either to this gold bar, which is a little bit maybe too bright, and definitely to this wood area over here. So we can fix that wood area pretty quickly, and I'll show you how using the graduated filter. But I'm just going to do a few more things to the image first, and then we'll start, you know, nitpicking it. Let's go ahead and add some texture. I love the texture slider. It brings out, like, detail without changing the tone. If you use clarity, it brings out mid-tone contrast, but it does change the tone. So I like a lot of texture and a little bit of clarity now where I used to use quite a bit of clarity. All right, so the rest of the settings are, are okay. The auto got us in the ballpark, and then it just needed a little, little more contrast, which is normally the case. Little or any exposure, which is the case. Now, let's fix this, this ugly wood over here. Get the graduated filter. Double click on the word effect up here, so all the sliders go to zero, and we're going to darken the exposure. So we'll go down, I don't know, I'm just guessing, stop and you know half or so and let's drag this to darken that area over there and uh that's not bad let's, it might might be maybe too dark let's see no actually they can maybe could go even a little darker 1.85 okay so that darkens that side of the photo some other things that i think are kind of funky is this this needs to be brought back it's a little bright right here let's get the brush the adjustment brush double click on effect so everything's back to zero Let's lower the highlight slider, and then I can paint over just this area right here and pull back those highlights. Because there's detail there that's kind of getting lost, and I, I overdid it a bit, so I'm going to hold the Option key on Mac. It would be the Alt key on Windows to get that spill over. And, and it also looks like up here it's a little, it's blooming a little in the red, so let's just kind of get rid of that. And that's a little better. So... Just darkening the sides and, and doing that. Let's see what that did. Here, I'm going to toggle this on and off so you can see a little better. It doesn't seem to... Did I do something? <laughs> it's not even showing what I did with the adjustment brush. Let's try this again and just turn it on and off. Oh, yeah, you can see now. There, Well, there we go. There we go. On and off you can see it's a little bright there but it's funny because it's only showing the adjustment brush we're not also seeing the adjustments from the there you go I was thinking I would see both of them but of course we we do not okay now one more thing I would do with the adjustment brush double click on effect and let's bring up the brightness of this vase the fancy term for it vase and it, it looks like it could need to be brighter I Definitely want you to look over at the vase. This is about the vase. And and like this isn't like a hero shot, right, from any story. This is one of those like, hey, I was walking by a store, and here's kind of interesting looking vase. It's, it's not, not a killer shot. Uh, that might be just a hair too bright, but not, not bad. Okay. The rest of the stuff, if you look, it's just there's a lot of dirty stuff in here, like just not awesome. Like there's all kinds of specks and spots and icky stuff. There is a spot removal tool that you could use in Lightroom. It, it's not nearly as good or as quick as the 
healing brush because you click it and you kind of wait and it picks a spot and a lot of times I find it picks a spot that you don't like and you have to kind of move it so this would be where I would jump over to Photoshop to just clean up that stuff so we're going to press command E on Mac or control E on Windows it's going to take this this raw image and loan it over to Photoshop for a minute so we can just fix some of that stuff over there so uh, there we go here we are in Photoshop let's just uh, zoom in a little bit and you see there's just a lot of junk right just a lot of icky stuff this stuff goes away so quick with the spot healing brush in photoshop because you can just go click 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 i mean you're so much faster here and better you're not going to have to undo anything where i wind up when i use the spot uh the spot tool in lightroom i wind up clicking four or five times and I have to do an undo because it picked a weird spot. It samples uh, very poorly in my opinion and we'll get rid of all these things. This shiny spot over here, 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 and here. All right, so we, we got rid of pretty much, oh, there's some junk up here too while we're here. But look how quickly you can clean this whole thing. It's like really just takes just, you know, so little. And that's using the spot healing brush here. And let's move over here. We'll get rid of that little telltale spot. Yeah, I think we're pretty much there. All right. Now, there are a couple of other issues that we should deal with. This whole big shiny area, let's just get rid of it. There is a tool that is the cousin to the uh, spot healing brush, which is the patch tool, which is what I have right here. It looks like a little patch. And you can just take parts of it and say, you know, this whole thing right here looks ugly. And what if we were to move it over someplace? You can find a place where it's not shiny. Maybe right there, let go and see what it does. And it got rid of, well, pretty much all of it. So not bad. We do have this kind of messy area here. Let's see what the healing brush will do. If we go over here to the spot healing brush and get rid of that. Not bad. What about this spot here? Not good. It it left a a big gap. And really, who who would really know? You know, if you don't, if you can't speak Chinese, you don't know what that symbol is. But it, it does look kind of broken. So here's what I might do. Let's add a layer. Let's go get a brush and let's get the eyedropper tool so we can steal the same blue. All right. So that blue right there is now our foreground color. So when we paint with the brush, it's going to paint in that blue. Let's not paint at just super soft because if you look at those edges, they're a little soft, but they're not super soft. So let's take our hardness up to maybe 30 or 40. All right. Let's get a nice small brush. We're going to cheat and just paint it in on this other layer. Now, why am I not seeing while I'm painting. There we go. It's like just painting and nothing was happening. All right. Now, I don't know what this symbol actually is, so we're going to fake it. There's our fake symbol. Now, it looks really fake because I just painted in blue, right? It's just it doesn't have texture or anything. So to add back in the texture, we go filter, noise, and we go to add noise. And what we're going to do, I'm going to zoom in so you can see this a little better. We're just going to add in some noise to where it doesn't look so, well, not quite that much noise, but a little bit of noise so it doesn't look so flat. All right, and then we can paint maybe a little more of this. And now that we've got some noise on there, you can paint it in and it'll look a little more realistic. There we go. I don't know if that symbol's correct, but you yeah, know, it's better than nothing. Okay, so at this point, what do we have left to do? Well, there's a couple spots that you could fix. You can see in the silk up here, if you really wanted to get sticky about it, get rid of that stuff. Let me flatten this image. I don't need to be working on a layer really anymore. Here, get rid of those. I'm using the space bar to switch to the temporarily switch to the grabber hand so I can move around. Anything else? I think we're pretty good. There's some little junk up here and over there. And there, look at this. There's like a chip in this thing. I would want a discount for sure. Oh, there's another chip. There's a couple of chips here. So let's do this. Get the clone stamp tool. So the clone makes a copy of stuff, right? So let's make a copy of, say, I don't know, maybe this one. Uh, maybe this one right here and just paint it over here to fill in that spot kind of there we go and maybe grab a, this one down here and paint it over that now oh, that's not a good one let's try this one and just make a copy here anything to get rid of those little defects because you're going to want like 30 percent off or something so and then maybe that little spot right there okay just a quick little fix <laughs> no one would really notice the size that i was going to show it and there's also this junk over here. Get rid of that. That just some general cleanliness. There's kind of like a piece of tape over here. I don't know if we need that. Let's get 
rid of that, paint over it with the brush, and boom, it's gone. Okay, and this little distracting light or area over here we don't really need. And I think we're pretty good. Let's sharpen it to death. Filter, sharpen, and we use the unsharp mask filter. And I'm going to use a lot, 120, 1. maybe 2, and really sharpen that baby up. Now, I've done pretty much what I want to do here inside of Photoshop, so we just go save and close. What happens is it jumps back to Lightroom. And so look, there's our, our, our new version, and let's see if we can see the old version next to it. So let's go and reset it to where we started. Let's hit Reset. So there's where we started, and then here's our finished version. So you can see the shine's gone, the dirt's gone and all. But that that's like a very typical thing to do to a photo, and I'll show you it in context here. Um, so I did a Adobe Spark page on the trip, and you can see it's not a hero image. It's, it's tucked within all of these kind of little mini images to tell the story of going to this village of, I don't know how you pronounce it, Daksu would be like maybe the American pronunciation, but... Anyway, these are the hero shots, right, from that trip. And those were just kind of support shots. But I wanted to show that because I think some of these support shots need as much work as, as some of the big ones. In fact, some of the big ones are kind of easier. Uh, I will show you, like, my favorite shot from this trip, and I'll just tell you what I did to it. Uh, way up top here is uh, not that one. I do like that one. This shot. So really all I had to do here was I made the white balance uh, more blue than it was. And then I got rid of little dots and specks and little junk in the water. And there wasn't a million of them, but there, was, there were spots and specks. And, and that's a, a typical thing to do. And I think it took me much longer to finish the, the image of the pot in the store than it did to do this one because this one was was just pretty great the way it was it was very fortunate that the scene was so awesome you a chimp could have got this shot but anyway uh, i did want to just uh, kind of take you through that and and give you a peek at that um hey if you want to learn a whole bunch more head over to kelby1.com we've got so many Lightroom classes. One I'm really in particularly excited about is one that I just released a couple of weeks ago. That is how do you edit video and do your own little, you know, commercials, behind the scenes, interviews, com you know, um, just anything, wedding little videos and stuff, all in Lightroom. No plugins, no going to any other program, whole thing in Lightroom. You export it as an HD video. It's got background music. It's got transitions. It's got fade ins, fade outs, titles, text, all of that stuff, and I show you how to do every bit of it in Lightroom. It is literally blowing people's mind. People are writing that sentence, this class blew my mind. Let it blow your mind. Go over to kelby1.com, sign up. You'll super dig it. I'll super dig you. We'll catch you next time. Thanks for stopping by here at lightroomkillertips.com. Take care, everybody.